Today, AMD's RX 10,095 XTX is set to destroy the RTX 6090 in every way imaginable. Plus, we learn the release timing of both those GPUs and the RTX 6090, Nvidia's gaming CPU is found, and AMD is releasing a new chip to save gamers money. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I don't know who needs to hear this, but building a PC doesn't have to be extremely expensive or stressful. In fact, that's why today's sponsor exists, Jawa. The only marketplace that was designed by gamers who actually get it, which is why they have awesome deals on all the parts for your PC build. Like this Asus RX 6600 for just $220. Need a great CPU? How about this Ryzen 9 3900X for $130? And they've got awesome deals like this on memory, motherboard, storage, anything you could want for your PC build. And they also offer a trade-in program so you can send them your old CPU or GPU to help save you even more money. And if you just don't want to deal with building your own PC at all, Jawa has awesome boutique pre-built gaming PCs to choose from. Whether you want a value PC to save some money or a decked out PC for the pro gamer in you, they've got it all and at a great price. So don't wait anymore and save now by heading to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, I thought I'd cover the really big story first because I just wanted to get into this. So if you saw my recent video where I went over a huge leak about AMD's next gen GPUs, you know that I covered a ton of specs from this leak document that goes over all of these cards, which he claims has been shared in multiple departments within AMD, so it's definitely looking like the real deal. Either way, in that video, I didn't really get to go into a ton of details because I had so much to cover, but when you get into it, you start to notice some wild stuff. Like for one, the fact that the flagship gaming GPU is made from essentially a cut down AI GPU. This die is really more made for AI, which explains why it's such a monster. And that explains why AMD wants to have a unified architecture. Remember that AMD's already said that the next gen architecture uDNA pulls in the RDNA and cDNA architectures into one. So they can use the die built for AI as a gaming dot. And this of course means that they can decide how much they produce based on demand other than binning of course. But this should help them be more efficient. Either way, moving over to the slide that puts all of the gaming GPUs in one place. Remember that AMD is planning to challenge the RTX 6090 with their top end chip. But the wild part is that they plan to do it at just 380 watts, which of course is far less than even the 5090. Yet this is planned to be equivalent to the RTX 6090. And while he does mention that it's highly suspect the exact performance that they're stating right here, it will likely be lower than that scratch math suggests because of that 380 watt TBP. But AMD themselves claim, according to this, it says docs literally list that the 10,090 XTX, and don't forget that this is just placeholder names, that's why it's in parentheses. We just put some name out there just so you know which GPU we're talking about. Either way, they claim that it itself targets the 6090, meaning even if this isn't right, we are still potentially looking at a 380 watt GPU targeting NVIDIA's next gen best. And of course, things can change many times they do, but at least for now, this is AMD's plans. Not only that, but like I had said before, the 10,070 XT is apparently targeting less than $550 and given the fact that the 10,070 XT over here is set to be right around the RTX 5080 to maybe even 4090's performance, that pricing is of course unbelievable. And that could also mean, especially if they are really planning to go after the RTX 6090, we could finally start seeing AMD force NVIDIA to lower prices in those high-end cards. Of course, we'll have to wait and see just how much this GPU is, but given the pricing of the 10,070 XT, it's definitely looking pretty good. 
Not only that, but don't forget that before I had mentioned that there is the AT0 and AT2, but there is in fact a lower end AT3, at least according to this. He says there is one he's aware of. However, he only knows the name, so he doesn't really know much more about it. But the simple fact is that there could be GPUs that are even lower end than this, though they could ultimately just be GPUs for within APUs or maybe like the PS6, things like that. Although I do believe leave. He had said AT2 was for that. Don't really remember for sure, but regardless, this really is looking amazing for AMD's next gen, but it actually doesn't stop there because according to this, the current release date target for AT0 and AT2 is 2027. Not only that, but in a newer video, he claims that within these documents, AMD believes that Nvidia is planning to release the 6000 series early 2027. That of course isn't too much of a surprise, but I will say, I think a lot of people were hoping that it would be a little bit sooner than that. Still not too far off, but either way, like I said, these GPUs are looking like some serious monsters. And it's pretty clear that AMD is going all out and Nvidia really should be worried about keeping the high end crown. And next up for today, we have yet another new benchmark leak for NVIDIA's N1X. Remember that that's NVIDIA's upcoming gaming, just consumer desktop CPU. Remember the N1X is their desktop model, while the N1, I believe, is mostly made for notebooks. Either way, we have a new benchmark now. I will say that this doesn't tell us too much in terms of performance, just like other benchmarks, but it's very clear that NVIDIA is moving quite fast with these upcoming CPUs. As you can see right down here, it says this leak confirms two things. N1X already runs on Windows and uses a special driver from the 590 branch. And as you can see, this benchmark is in Furmark and it scored 4,286. And this is the 720p preset, which as they state, the official Furmark 1 rankings for 720p hasn't been updated in 13 years, but they do have access to it. And you can see that they claim that the score of 4,286 points strongly suggests the benchmark does not reflect the GPU's full potential, basically got less than half the score of the RTX 5060, even though this desktop APU has 37% fewer cores. So obviously we do know with it being an APU, it is gonna have lower clocks and things like that, but I highly doubt that this is representative of the final performance of the APU and pretty much anyway. At the very least, I would expect it to be right around or quite a bit faster actually than the RTX 5060, even the desktop model, given the fact that it has so many more cores. So like I said, don't really rely too much on this, especially because we already know that this is built on their newest Blackwell architecture and we know what kind of performance we can expect from that. Though obviously, like I said, this is an APU, so it of course doesn't have the same thermal headroom that a discrete GPU has and of course it has to share resources with the CPU, different things like that. But regardless, this does show us that the leaks about this were absolutely spot on. This is the real deal. NVIDIA is working on it and they're working on it hard. And lastly for today, we have confirmation that AMD is gearing up to release an F series of CPUs, or at least one processor that we know of so far. These are of course similar to Intel's F series of products, they're basically the exact same CPU as the non-F, but with the integrated graphics disabled. This of course means that the product is a bit cheaper and it's great for gamers because most of us use discrete GPUs anyway. Either way, as you can see right down here, this was originally discovered by Bits and Chips, and ASUS has now confirmed that AMD is set to launch a Ryzen 7 9700F SKU. You can see it right here in CPU support on ASUS's site. There it is, the Ryzen 7 9700F. And as you would expect, it's an 8-core CPU with, well, 8 Zen 5 cores, and it lacks iGPU support. Not only that, but this confirms to have the same base clock as the regular 9700X at 3.8 gigahertz and the same 65 watt TDP. 
Not only that, but according to rumors, the pricing is set to be around $250, which is a very nice drop for the 9700X, which as they state, currently retails for $305. Basically, this is pretty much the exact same CPU. Obviously, we don't really know for sure about boost clocks, but hopefully those are the same, or at the very least, you can kind of overclock it a little bit, something like that, and actually save a good bit of money. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD to finally compete in the high end with their 10,000 series, or do you just think that they'll blunder it yet again? Let me know down in the comments below, and don't forget to check out Jawa down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.